everybody, it's Wendy. Welcome. I'm so excited that you're here today. We are going to make this color magic slider card. It is such a cool card and it's a huge wow to whoever you give it to. So I wanted to start by telling you all the information for this card is over on my blog at levenstampin.com because there are so many measurements and stuff like that and it's just too hard to remember them all here. So I have a piece of cardstock, Whisper White cardstock that I've cut at um, three and three quarters by 10 inches. And then it was folded in half at the five inch mark to make this little pocket. I'm taking a piece of Melon Mambo cardstock and I am taking my pencil and making marks on the window. And then I use that Project Life framelit to cut out the center of the window. Now you can just set that aside and move on to the next part of my card. So creating these cards is really simple. It's just a lot of steps. So I encourage you to just be patient and know that it's going to take you a little bit of time to create this. So the card that I, uh, the cardstock that I'm stamping on here, I want to stamp through the front of the window onto the back because that's the image that I'm going to color. And that's where all my color will come from in my slider pocket. So I'm using Memento uh, Tuxedo Black ink here because I need it to go well with my Copic markers. If you wanted to watercolor or something like that, then you could use stays on ink, but I'm using Memento and I'm using my stamp -a jig to position this image right where I want it in the center. Now I actually would have probably used my Misty tool for this, but the reason I didn't is simply because I'm using a stamp that's already mounted onto a wood block. So since this stamp is already mounted to a wood block, I couldn't use it in my Misty. And that's okay because I really like using the stamp image jig too. So now I have a piece of acetate and this is just from the window sheets from Stampin' Up. And I've cut it down and I, I, as I said, check my website for all the measurements because I don't remember them all here. Um, and there's a printable over there so it'll be easy for you. I'm taking the piece of acetate and I'm placing it underneath the window because I need to stamp directly over the top of the image I've already stamped. Now for this, I have to use stays on ink because it's a pigment ink and it's permanent. And if I use Memento, it would just wipe off. So I'm gonna go back to my stamp -a -jig, um plastic here and line it up right up over the, that image that's already been stamped down and put my stamp -a jig in place and then I will stamp again in stays on ink. Now, please note that when you're doing this, you have to have some patience and move kind of slow because there's lots of steps. And if you go too fast, you'll stamp the wrong thing on the wrong place. And you can just ask me how I know that. So um, anyway, so now the second step is to stamp this onto this acetate sheet. You can't really see the acetate sheet here because I've tucked it underneath that window frame and it's clear, but it's there. So I'm <clears throat> inking up my uh, stamp and using that stamp image jig to make sure I get this in the same place. Now when I remove everything, you can see that the koala bear is stamped on to the acetate sheet and he lines up nicely with the one underneath, which is what we want. Um, this koala bear is super cute and it is retiring. So if you want it, I highly, highly recommend that you purchase it now because it will be gone. So to get the retired products, you just go online to the retiring products in my online store. And I have to tell you, make sure you use the host code for this month that's on the screen so that you get a free card kit from me. Or you could get two or three depending on the, price, the amount of your order. Okay, so all I've done is secure that acetate to the front of this pocket. This is the insert for the inside of the pocket. This is the piece that stays white and it reveals the color underneath. So what I'm doing right now is I'm lining this little piece up over the window so that I can make sure that when it slides down into the pocket, it the that it's all white and no color will be showing. Then I'm taking my pencil and I'm just marking the edges of it so that I know where to um, cut my opening because I'm going to cut an opening there. Okay, now that I have my um, spots marked, 
what I'm going to do is slice open in between. But then I realized, oh yeah, I need to run those um, pencil marks out a little further because I need to be able to see the point of the blade where it will line up so that I can slit that little um, score mark. So I try to slice right on the score line for my pocket and it really helps to have a nice sharp blade um, when you do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it down and then slice and now I have my little pocket. Now this is something that you should do <clears throat> prior to moving on with this card is make sure that this slides in and out. You don't wanna get this all the way to the point that you're almost done and then realize that this isn't gonna slide in and out for you. So you can see here I'm having to really mess with this. It is a tight fit and you want it to be a tight fit. You don't want it to be really loose. But once I realize it fits in there, I'm good to go. So the next step is doing my coloring and I'm using Copic markers. And earlier I said that this was Whisper White cardstock and I actually misspoke. This is Spectrum Noir cardstock. And the reason I use that cardstock is because it allows the blending for Copic markers. So anytime that I'm gonna use Copic markers, I use my Spectrum Noir um, Brilliant White cardstock because I prefer it over Nina Solar White. It doesn't tend to bleed. And so this is what I use. So I'm using W1, W3, W5, and W7 on this Koala Bear. And I'm just going to speed up the coloring so that you don't have to sit here forever and listen to me talk and color this koala. So I'm starting with the very lightest color and then I'm going in with the W3 and I'm adding some shading and darkening some of the edges. And then after I'm done with the W3, I will move in with the W5. And then I'll just add some W7 at the very, very edge. So. Um, I have taken um, a couple of different Copic marker classes to learn how to use Copic markers. And I mean, it's just really coming along really nicely. My, I can just see in my coloring, it keeps getting better and I keep getting more and more of the concept of how it should be done. And it's just really coming together great. So if you're interested in Copic coloring and stuff, I highly suggest taking some classes first um, and just only getting a few markers because they are super expensive. So um, it's not something I recommend somebody getting into. It's not for the faint of heart because um, it's expensive and um, it's time consuming to learn how to, to use the markers. But I just love the way they look. And so for me, it's something that I really, really wanted to do and add it to my arsenal of talent. So this is just one more thing I'm working on and learning how to do. So I love how this koala bear turns out and you can see his light source is coming from the left. That's why he's lighter on the left side and darker on the right side. And then I'm just gonna add um, some RV29 to this flower, which is the closest color I had to Melon Mambo. And then I've got some YR27 that I'm adding to the center of the flower. And then I'm just gonna rosy up the cheeks of my koala bear a little bit and then blend those out. I probably should have used a lighter pink, but it worked out fine. And then I'm going to grab my masks that I've already cut because I've already made this card once to make sure it would come together for you on film okay. And I'm covering up my koala bear and my flower with my little masks. I use Simon Says Stamp masking paper. You can get it at simonsaysstamp.com and um, that's what I use to map, to stamp and mask off all of my stuff. So if you're wondering where that paper comes from that's sticky on one side but doesn't tear stuff apart, that's where it is. I'm using Bermuda Bay ink and I have a sponge here that I've cut down. Uh, the Stampin' sponges come in a big round piece and I cut them into four so that they're smaller. And then I'm just gonna start sponging on my Bermuda Bay ink to cover the background of this card. So one of the tips I wanna give you for a color magic card is that you really wanna make sure that you add lots of color underneath the panel because you'll see when I finish this card, if you didn't, it wouldn't make as big of an impression. So my goal is to leave nothing white. I don't want any white showing. I want it to be really, really colorful 
and really, really pretty so that when you pull up on that insert, the reveal is more dramatic. And I think it just really um, gives the card a lot of pop. So I'm finishing up here with my Bermuda Bay ink and it's a little uneven, the inking, but it takes a long time and I just didn't want to take up the time and I knew it would look fine. So now I'm pulling away my masks and that's my favorite thing to do because I just love, I love the reveal. And then you have this super sweet little koala <clears throat> and flower in the center surrounded by this beautiful Bermuda Bay ink. But you can see that I missed a couple little spots. So I'm just going to take my Bermuda Bay marker and kind of go around the edges of this koala wherever there's white showing so that I don't have this stark white uh, line around the koala because I just don't like the way it looks. So I'm doing that and you really can't even tell that it was ever not right. And the person receiving the card isn't going to tell because they're going to be so impressed. Okay, so now we are going to... Um, Finish off this card by adding the insert and adding all the adhesive. So the first thing we have to do is um, add the little strips for the um, track for the inside of the pocket. So these strips are cut at a quarter of an inch by, oh, I cannot remember, a quarter of an inch by something. Again, check my blog, all the... Um, all the measurements and all the pieces you need are on my blog. So just check there and that'll give you the info you're looking for. So I'm adding these because these are the tracks of the card. So you just add them to the very edges and this just keeps your insert from wobbling all over the place when it goes up and down inside. So all I'm doing here is I'm removing the adhesive backing from the card and then um, I have a little strip that I need to add here to the bottom of the insert and that's the stopper. That's what keeps the insert from just pulling all the way out when the recipient pulls the tab up and um, checks the card out. Um, if you don't have this stopper in place then that insert would just pull all the way out and your um, recipient would probably struggle getting it back in place. So this just goes at the very bottom of the insert and then I kind of line it up in the tracks and trim off the edges because I want to make sure that um, that it's not going to catch on anything. Right here, I'm just removing the adhesive from the outer edge. I shouldn't have put the adhesive on that strip. I should have put it on the, the piece, the insert piece, but you know, we live and we learn, right? So I'm just getting that all cleaned up and getting that off. And then I'm going to go ahead and kind of measure this out by looking at it and seeing how it looks and you can see here how it overlaps into the track and that's not good I don't want that so I'm kind of just feeding it through the top of the pocket and then I'll line it up again because I really want to make sure that this is lined up before I before I do the pulling of it up and down and stuff um, and adhering everything in place so I'm lining it up here and then I'm just going to trim off the edges a little bit later. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, use some more of my tear and tape adhesive to close this pocket. So I'll get to that in just a second when I'm done trimming this off. But I want to say something about that tear and tape adhesive. I actually had to pull the strips out and then cut them in half. So what you see me using on here is um is like one eighth of an inch tear tape instead of a fourth of an inch because I took the time to cut up the middle of it and cut it into two two pieces so that's why it's skinnier if you're wondering and then I have these little bitty butterfly punches this is a punch that is available in the annual catalog and um, I think it's called I think it's actually called itty bitty butterfly and I'm just adding those to the top of the insert because that's going to be my little pull tab. And you'll see when this all comes together. So I'm adding all my pieces now of adhesive to the edge of my pocket. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove the release paper from the, from the back. And uh, once I get all of that done, I can close the pocket. And that piece of the card is finished. 
So like I said, a lot of steps, a little bit time consuming, but watch this. Ta-da! How cool is that? I mean, this is just one of those cards that if somebody receives it, they are just going to be like, oh my gosh, how did she or he do that? That's amazing. And so I think it's fun and easy and yeah, a little bit time consuming, but not bad. So remember that Melon Mambo piece that I cut earlier? I'm now going to take that piece and I'm going to layer it over the top of my panel. And I'm doing that because I want to give some more color. Remember I said lots of color on this card. So I want that Melon Mambo <clears throat> to really pull out the color of that flower when um, the person pulls up on the little butterfly tab. And we're almost done with this card, believe it or not. So the longest part of making this card is just simply the pocket piece. Once you have that done, the rest goes really quick. So I have a piece of four and a quarter by 11 inch cardstock cut here, and then I folded it over to make uh, a two size card. And then I have a piece of Bright's designer series paper from the Bright's paper stack. This is Daffodil Delight. And I wanted to use the stripe side and um, then I'm just going to layer down my pocket uh, using dimensional tape. Now, I want to mention, I do want to mention that um, this is part of a blog hop. So please make sure that you go check out um, the rest of the hoppers. And I made a huge mistake. When I made this project and got it all ready, I thought that the blog hop was for thinking of you cards. I was wrong. It's for thank you cards. So um, I'm probably the only person that's part of the blog hop that did a thinking of you. But I guess that could kind of be a thank you. You could have thinking of you on the front and inside saying, you know, I'm thinking of you because of such the wonderful thing that you did for me. So this is how cool this card is. I mean, I could do this all day long, pulling up and and watching the reveal of color. And um, the more of them you make, the easier it gets and the cooler they get. I just love this card. I think it's one of those really wow cards. So make sure you go over to my blog, hop along with the blog hop, check out all the information I have for this color magic card, and make sure that you visit me again next week. Make sure you use that host code if you're placing an order with me. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the like on this video. Here's a couple more videos for you. All you have to do is click on the images. If you're on an iPad or a tablet or a phone, you won't be able to click on them, only if you're on a computer. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.